Dylan Larkin is one of the most fascinating and probably one of the best players that could be a UFA at this year's NHL free agency, but the Detroit Red Wings have been in a long and tedious negotiation on his next contract that has seemingly gone nowhere. And we've seen some big trade rumors recently surrounding the Detroit Red Wings captain and his future with Detroit. But make sure you watch till the end for all the news broken down and hit that subscribe button if you're new for more hockey content just like this. Now Dylan Larkin just continues to get better and better for Detroit and this year was another big stepping stone once again getting past the 50 point plateau but especially this season improving his defensive game by a big margin. And so far in 52 games he has 20 goals, 30 assists for a nice 50 points after being in a pretty good position with 69 points in 71 games last year. But even though Dylan Larkin hasn't quite hit that point per game level yet he's still been one of the better centers in the league and offensively on this Detroit team has carried them in a lot of games throughout the year and has proven himself to be the captain proven himself to be a player that Detroit should be prioritizing and signing long term right but let's go to camp friendly and look at the pending UFAs this season and there's a lot of different kinds of variety but really the top two that really come to mind and two players that will get massive paydays in free agency whether it's with their teams or not is David Postnock and of course Dylan Larkin. You can see Postnock with 74 points in 53 games and then you see Larkin behind him with 50 points in 51 games as I'm recording this and to me with Larkin he's gonna get a massive payday whether Detroit is going to give that or not and he's also at the point of his career where he wants to get that big contract and we've kind of seen that by the contract negotiations up to this point. But of course, being a center, being right in the prime of his career at 26 years old and putting up the point production he has, as well as being the captain of the Detroit Red Wings, if another team ends up signing him in for agency, there's a real possibility, especially with what Matthew Barzal got, that he could get up of to $9 million. And I can absolutely see it right now how Dylan Larkin's agent is saying Matthew Barzal got $9.15 million. How does my client that has done so much for your team is the captain of your team not going to get around at least that same range and they kind of have a point but just look at what Dylan Larkin is doing this year at Detroit and you see that points difference between the rest of the team and Dylan Larkin you can see he leads the Red Wings in points with 50 points in 51 games second place is a defenseman with Philip Ronick who's done some exceptional things offensively but when your second place spot is a defenseman and is a 15 point wide gap Dylan Larkin has simply been carrying the Red Wings offensively and carrying the Red Wings in so many ways, not even just on offense, but again, that defensive play that has gotten better and better as time has gone on, as well as a 54% face-off win percentage. And to me, there's almost no way that he doesn't get at least 8.5. But now let's get to the tweet that I wanted to talk about here from Andy Strickland, really di digesting and dissecting the Dylan Larkin situation, not even just with his contract, but with a potential trade. And Andy Strickland, and says this it's believed Dylan Larkin wants nine million per year with his next contract also believe the best offer from the Red Wings has been in the eight million dollar range many believe he may not accept a trade without an extension in place and told he's not in a rush to leave now looking at what Andy Strickland has told us it's kind of just been the same sort of thing for a year I mean I remember that we were hearing negotiations this last offseason before this year even started regarding Dylan Larkin and, and and what could potentially go on with his next contract in Detroit this has been a long arduous process and there's kind of been almost no real progress whatsoever. He's kind of always wanted that $9 million figure, while the Red Wings have definitely been that lower, maybe $7.5, $8 million range. But it seems like there's just been not much progress, and that's kind of disheartening in Larkin's side for just how good he's done. A contract should already have been done at this point. Obviously, it's easier said than done, and this is a hard negotiation and one that's extremely important for Detroit but being the captain for your team, carrying them this much, and there's still almost no real discussion, no real progress with just a couple months to go, a few months to go until free agency, that wouldn't really give the best taste in my mouth if I were if I were Dylan Larkin, honestly. And the fact that we're also talking about a potential trade with Dylan Larkin is kind of crazy too. And we have heard some rumblings here that if this continues to stall out in Detroit, obviously not being in a playoff position, if there is a heavy offer, we could potentially see a Dylan Larkin trade, which is wild to think about. 
Now what makes a Dylan Larkin trade especially tricky is that no trade clause. If Dylan Larkin doesn't want to get traded, he won't get traded. Simply that. But again, if we see a lack of progress, if we see a big offer out there, if he is able to go to a contender and also get an extension done, it seems like that could definitely be a possibility. Now looking at the Detroit Red Wings in their offseason, they'll have $40 million to work with and a lot of dead cap as well that'll come off the books this year with the Nelkovic uh, Barry penalty as well as other contracts like Pertuzzi may potentially going off. They're going to trade him at the trade deadline, among other things. So they'll have a lot of space to be able to re-sign Dylan Larkin if they want to at a big number. But it also is still a confusing situation and a situation that Detroit needs to process carefully because you don't want to have the same thing happen to the Islanders where they gave up John Tavares for nothing and they thought they were going to be re able to re able to re-sign him. They kept postponing it. They weren't able to get close. And then he just went to free agency and that immediately signed with the Toronto Maple Leafs and your franchise center is gone. Now, obviously it worked out pretty well for the Islanders, but I don't think it would work nearly as well for Detroit. They need Dylan Larkin and what he's been able to provide and that force and that 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 commandingness that he has every single shift. That is so important for this Red Wings franchise going forward. And if they aren't able to keep him, that would be a disaster, especially if it's through free agency. And with the Red Wings in their system, they could have, I guess, Cop as a first line center and probably Marco Casper as a middle six guy in the future, but they are not set to have Dylan Larkin leave their team. They were already still, I would say, a little bit thin at center and maybe even in need of drafting another center at this next uh, NHL draft with Larkin signed long term and on that long term roster. If they don't have him, then Detroit is going to be in a absolute disastrous situation especially in the Atlantic division just that just has so many solid teams around you with especially the Buffalo Sabres getting so much better Detroit this season was already disappointing but losing their captain would make it just awful awful now what's interesting is that almost this exact situation happened before except with Steve Eisman being in charge of the Tampa Bay Lightning and having to juggle the Steven Stamco situation Going back to 2016, he almost became a UFA, almost hit free agency, and there was those rumors of him going to Toronto that offseason, but that obviously did not end up happening. But just days before free agency began, all the way until the last week, he was able to get Steven Stamco signed to an eight-year contract. So we've obviously seen in the past that Steve Eisman can be patient, can get it done in the end, and that might be what I guess Red Wings fans are hoping for at this point. But it's funny because just like Dylan Larkin, Steven Stamco's 26-year-old center, the captain of his team, and of course with Steve Eisman being the GM, there's a lot of parallels here. And to me, I think we could see the same situation transpire. It's obvious that with these huge, big contracts, Steve Eisman preaches patience, and that will just have to be how it works out in this case. I mean, there's a couple of teams that I guess can make sense. The Columbus Blue Jackets are one. Again, if they don't get a Bedard or Fantilli, maybe even if they do, they could still go after, uh, after Larkin because of the cap space that they would have, but also the range that he'd be able to play. He'd be able to play with Goudreau. He'd still be able to play on an eh team next year, but he would have a forward group around him that is quite decent. And also maybe even the Montreal Canadiens in their center situation, they might not have the most cap space in the world, but after this deadline, they could have a lot more and they could be in a position to spend this off season. But to me, I kind of am I'm in a, in a disarray of where he could end up going if he is made available. And he probably will get more towards the 9 million if he does mark, which if he does end up getting that obviously lessens the amount of teams that could be in on him. But it would be wild if he's out there because alongside maybe a posture knock situation in Fradency, things could get wild. Let me know what you guys think about the Dylan Larkin situation right now. Do you see the Detroit Red Wings signing him? And do you think the Red Wings should sign him near that $9 million threshold? Is it is it right for the Red Wings to, to kind of hold out in this situation and want more of the $8 million range? Let me know what you guys think. Is Larkin deserving of that $9 million mark? Could he get traded at the deadline? And if he does go to free agency, where do you guys think he'll end up going? I'm going to pick Columbus right now, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you haven't already. As well, click up on the card up here for all my hockey trainer content right in one playlist. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, and goodbye.